Hi guys, this is a review of the Lorac palette for Afterglow, and it looks like this. So there are 10 shadows in it, two of which are pretty much exclusively highlighters, but you know, you could use them on your lid. So I already have a pretty bold lip today, but I don't want to go boring on you either. So the lipstick I'm wearing is the um, Wet n Wild Purdy Persimmon. Um, it's just a basic, and then I have a Tarte um, Lip Surgeons on top. I think it's Tipsy or Flirty or something like that. And now I'm using the Lorac Behind the Scenes um, Eye Primer. And I am just priming from the lid all the way up to the brow. I've already done the rest of my face, so hopefully we don't have any fallout. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with a transition color in here. And I always seem to go boring on these videos, so let's spice it up. Um, I'm gonna do this bronzy color, it's really pretty right there um, and I'm going to do that as my transition color now, I already have a lot of warmth going on with my orange shirt and the orange lipstick so I think I'm gonna have to use some cool colors that are in this palette to make it pop what do you think I think so I hate how you guys can't talk back I swear it's becoming worse I'm finding myself asking questions and then I'm like oh yeah Nobody is going to answer. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use the um, gold here as a highlight color because I can. Um, I'm going to use that right under the brows and in the inner corner. So this is a really pretty gold. It's not white. Like I usually use like a white with some gold in it. This is a gold. I'm going to blend it because it definitely looks a little harsh at the moment, but I like it. Nonetheless, this is my sophisticated blending. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to go for this seafoam green color. And I'm saying that because I don't wear this color, like ever. And I really want to give you guys a variety of looks on the channel. So I also wanted to test some of the different finishes in the palette. So I put some on the brush. Let's just see what happens. Um, I think I'm going to put that on the lid. I'll live dangerously. What do you guys think? I like color. I'm just not sure that I am a color person. Does that make sense? Like, I like it on other people, and I own a lot of it because I always think, oh, maybe I'll use that color, but I never end up using it. So, all right. Now, I feel like this shadow has a lot of fallout. Do you see how it's very soft? Do you see how, like, I'm kind of knocking off pieces of it? They're like going into the white. Um, so you do have to be careful with that. Um, in the future, I'll probably use this like with doing my eyes first or putting the tape under your eyes or something like that. So it's a very pretty um, color. I mean, I really do think that it's pretty. It's not shimmery, but it's not, it's not matte either. I would say it's probably a satin finish. So let's see here. Um, do we want to add some more warmth? I'm going to take this dark brown, it's just a matte um, finished dark brown, and put that in the outer V. And I'm going to have to blend like crazy because these colors are unique. I'm purposely kind of overdrawing that crease area on the outer V. I'm going to see if I can really smoke it out. I want it to be about the green, but I don't want the green to be like, oh my gosh. So let me just blend those out a little bit, just in that outer V area. And then like always, I'm going to go back in with my sponge that I did my foundation with, and I just kind of go and clean up the edges. Because I can't leave well enough alone, I want to try this um, pretty pink color. It's a shimmery, light, champagne -y pink. I'm going to put that on the top of this green. Oh, it's very soft. These shadows are a lot like the Lorac Pro 2 or Pro, where they're very, very soft. Um, for me, it's good and bad. There are pluses and minuses. Now I'm going to try this salmon color. I feel like I may regret it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, that's pretty. All right, I need to stop myself with the eyeshadow. Okay, I'm going to blend these out again, and then I'm going to put on some liner. Let's see, color liner should I do today? I think I'm 
I'm going to go with brown. Okay. Okay, so I did a brown liquid liner. It's still kind of drying. That's why it looks shiny. Um, on the upper lash line and a little bit of a wing. Now I'm going to do some brown liner on the lower lash line and I'm going to smoke it out with that turquoise color. All right, it's the moment of truth for this turquoise. I'm going to use the dark, dark turquoise. And I'm actually just placing that right on top of the brown I just did. It is pretty. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me change your angle a little bit. Moving my mirror to the other side. Let's see. Has that changed your view at all as far as lighting goes? I can't tell, but... All right. Do that on the other eye. And since I can never leave well enough alone, I'm going to actually go on top of that brown liner with some of the turquoise. And let's see. Okay, it's time for some lashes. Should I do falsies today? I think this dramatic eye look kind of demands it, but I'm really only going thrift store shopping, so I don't know that I need it, but I'm going to. I'll be right back. Okay, this is the finished look. I've got some major falsies on right now. Uh, I need to fix them a little, but um, some turquoise, some orange lipstick. This is very different than anything I've ever done before, I think, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. That was my review and demo of the Lorac uh, palette for Afterglow. I do think the shadows are a little soft, but that's nothing new for Lorac. They tend to have ten their shadows to be pretty soft. So if you don't mind that, I think it's a great palette for the money. I think it was about $25. Uh, I got a half price at Halt Look, but I guess that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks. Bye.